In this video, I will talk about three different ways to power an Arduino Uno. That are, power using USB port, power using DC barrel jack, and power using V-in pin. But this is not the complete story. Each method has some limitations. And you must aware of these limitations when you start powering your Arduino. Otherwise, your components might be burnt. Here, I draw a powering diagram of Arduino Uno. First, I will discuss powering with the DC jack. When we connect wall watt power supply or connect a battery to DC jack, then it just powers the 5 volt regulator on the board. And this voltage regulator requires a minimum input of 6.2 volts. And it takes maximum input voltage of 20 volts. So, the power supply that you're going to connect to DC jack must be ranging between 6.2 volts and 20 volts. It is recommended to use voltages between 7 volts and 12 volts. While voltages above 12 volts would create a high dropout that would cause overheating of the regulator even with low current draw. Then the regulated 5 volts goes to the microcontroller and 5 volts pin. Also, to 3.3 volts regulator. The regulator lower down the voltages. And then, the regulated 3.3 volts are available at 3.3 volts pin on power rail. The next thing about that 5 volt regulator. It can provide up to 1 ampere of current. Why it is important? Let's see. The components on the Arduino Uno itself will be using around 25 milliamps of current. If you attach more components to Arduino, such as relays and motors, then you'll be drawing more current than what the regulator is actually rated for. And what that means is, you'll burn up the part. So, while powering the Arduino, keep in mind the 1 amp limit of voltage regulator. DC jack itself is a 2.1 millimeter plug with the positive pin going to the central part of the jack. And it's important to use center positive plug. But, if you accidentally use a center negative plug, it reverses the polarity. Then what happens? For your luck, there is a diode. And this diode protects against the reverse polarity. And it will save your components from damage. Second method to power the Arduino is power using V-in pin. The voltage requirement for the V-in pin is the same as with the DC jack. Because the V-in pin is connected to the 5 volt regulator. But the one thing you must keep in mind. It does not have any reverse polarity protection. Because there's no protection diode. So make sure that always connect the positive voltages to V-in pin. The last thing that I want to discuss is relates to V-in pin or DC jack. Notice, there is P-channel MOSFET that is connected to USB port and it works like a switch. When it is open, then no current can flow. And when closed, the current is able to flow. If the voltage on this switch is greater than 6.6 .6 volts, then this switch is open. And when that switch is open, it disables the power line from the USB port. So what does this mean? It means that, if you apply the voltage to the USB port and DC jack at the same time, then the power from USB will be ignored. Note that, it only disabled the USB power, but still, you will be able to upload the sketch. And exchange data between Arduino and computer. Third method to power the Arduino is, power using USB port. It is directly connected to the voltage regulator's output. You might also connect 5 volts mobile charger to power the Arduino. If the power comes from a computer, then there is a current limitation of 500 milliamps. As we have discussed before, drawing more current than the component is rated for can damage the Arduino board. What happens when you draw more current than the USB port can provide? There is a thermal self-resettable protection polyfuse connected to the USB port that will get tripped. This protect USB port from damage. It is a very good feature if you accidentally overdraw current. That's it. This is for today. If you have any question, then comment below. See you in another video. Bye.